Hi, my name is Clarissa Draper and I work with the Charter School Assistive Technology team. I have something to say. I'm going to share with you some ideas today of how to use assistive technology as a teacher to assist your students in utilizing their own assistive technology and hopefully to make your job as a teacher a little bit easier. So I might not be introducing any new technology to you, but hopefully some new strategies to help the implementation of assistive technology go smoother. The experience that I had when I was working with a school team to implement a piece of assistive technology. And this was a great school. They were doing a lot of really awesome things with their students using assistive technology. Um, so as I spoke with one of the teachers, I was asking him to model the use of the assistive technology by using it in his small group. His response was no, it wouldn't work. AT doesn't fit into the way that he taught his classes. Wow. I was initially surprised by his response, but then as I thought about it, I realized that I, and probably most of us, have the same response. There are lots of reasons why assistive technology implementation is difficult, but I just listed a few right here. So AT seems like more work than our current strategy. Just an example might be that a student um, who is unable to read text, um, it's easier for them to just wait for someone else to read to them than it is for them to get out a tool and read it themselves. For us as a teacher, it's easier for us to use our voice to read something because we always have it with us than it is for us to grab a piece of technology and use that to speak. Trying something new can feel really awkward at the beginning. We're unsure of how to use it. We're uncomfortable knowing whether we're using it the right way. We're not sure how other people are perceiving us. We often look to others around us to decide how to act. If everyone around us is completing a task one way, it can be difficult for us to decide to complete the task in a different way using a different tool. So I put some thought into how to implement assistive technology across settings, so to generalize its use. Also across social hierarchy, so between teachers and students. Um, I wanted to use strategies to normalize its use using tier one interventions and universal design. So I don't suggest implementing all of these all of the time. Some of the strategies will lend themselves better to older students who are required to take notes. And some strategies will lend themselves better to younger students. Um, but I hope that some of the strategies will work for you in your setting and with your students. Sometimes we hand students a smart pen. We teach them how to use it. How to take notes with it. And how to review our notes. You as the teacher can model to the students how to use the smart pen. You can use it anytime that you would be writing notes um, using the document camera to display for your students or use, using a whiteboard. So I'm going to place my smart my notebook under the document camera and explain everything that I'm going to do with smart pen so the students can know the process of how to use it. So I'm going to turn my pen on and start recording. So today we're going to learn a lesson on magnets. There are two important words to remember when we're learning about magnets. The first word is attract. To attract means that two things come together. These two arrows are showing that things are coming together. The second word is repel. To repel means that two things go apart. So those arrows show that the objects are going apart. So remember those two words as you do your homework tonight on page 21. Now I'm stopping recording and now I'm going to upload this to our class website so you can review it at home. We 
we might give a student a rocket book and teach them how to take their notes and save their notes. You can also model the use of a rocket book to your students by placing it under a document camera. When you're giving notes to your class that you want displayed, you can use the rocket notebook instead. So we're going to continue our discussion on magnets today. And we're going to learn how every magnet, regardless of a shape, has a north and a south end. When I finished my lesson, I could circle one of the icons at the bottom. I've attached these icons to different cloud-based storage. And so whatever icon, I can circle multiple, whatever icon I've circled, when I take a picture of it with, within the app, it will automatically send to that storage site. This will allow students to have easy access to the notes. Another great thing about um, Rocketbook is that it actually transcribes handwriting into text. So then you can make your notes searchable or you can have them read aloud to you. This is the Rocketbook app. When you open it, you can select the camera icon to scan your note page. It can automatically find and scan your page. It will transcribe your handwriting and also send automatically to the icon that you have circled at the bottom. You can also select other destinations to send your notes to. Rocketbook also has these neat things called beacons. You place these orange corners on your whiteboard and scan it and it will take an image of everything within those orange borders. Sometimes we give students an iPad with a note-taking app on it. We teach them how to record their notes, how to take notes with text, and with drawings. Then how to review their notes. You as the teacher can also use Notability to display notes to your class. Make sure to start recording your audio. Then you can type notes to display to your class when it's connected to a projector. You can also draw images. Give your notes the same way you would using any other device or means of displaying your notes. Using an app allows you to share the audio recording along with the visual notes with your um, individual students or with your entire class on your website or through email or another cloud-based storage. Sometimes we give students a device to do speech to text with. We train them when to use it and how to use it. Magnets by Clarissa Draper. We teach them how to edit and review their writing. We can model to our students how to use speech to text anytime we want to generate and display text for the class to see. Today our lesson is on magnets, period. Two important words about magnets are attract and repel, period. Sometimes we give students a device so they can have text read aloud to them. We teach them how to use it and when to use it. Great in the summer. Mr. Grace's patio was hot and uncomfortable. The we can model using text-to-speech to our students um, any time that we want to read text aloud to our class. Instead of verbalizing it with my voice, I'm going to use an app 
called Seeing AI. There are lots of different apps that will do text-to-speech um, using OCR, but that's the app I'm going to use today, Seeing AI. But the treetops at the bottom of the gorge rushed closer, Mr. Grace could see. And sometimes we hand our students an AAC device, and after lots and lots of training, we teach them how to communicate with others. This is fun. Not like I was using an AAC device to model at the beginning of my training. Modeling um, using the AAC is a great way to help students be more comfortable with the end of normalizer. Thank you. I need to give a thank you to my old Davis team for introducing me to modeling with AAC. Oh, Thanks for watching my training on assistive technology for assistive teachers. And I hope that some of the strategies help you as a teacher. And most importantly, help your students to be able to use assistive technology effectively so that they can be successful more independently.